instead of sitting down and studying, giving a review, I said, you know, what can I do to get these kids up and, you know, really wanting to remember something from this? And we're, so we're studying the Revolutionary War. And I gave him kind of a prompt, said, you get a choice of any battle, any event, topic from uh, the Revolutionary War, and said, here's some guidelines. I, I chose their partners for them, um, kind of made a little structured partnering like that, and then gave them the freedom to come up with a one to three minute um, live news report from the Revolutionary War. So if they were reporting from the Battle of Saratoga or the Boston Tea Party, the Boston Massacre, and it has just taken off from here. And it's just been an awesome project so far. And I kind of told the kids, I said, effort. I just want to see effort on this. Um, I just want to see that you're putting in the time, the research they had to show me, their information that they're going to report on, know exactly what they're going to say, how they're going to do it. Um, and it's pretty much going to be kind of an effort grade. You definitely are going to see the kids that, eat. I told the kids that, you know, I'm not going to judge you and grade it on how well it turns out. I'm going to, you know, how, how well of an effort you put into it. Kids' creativity, you know, I told them to have fun. But I mean, I had kids coming up with commercials and saying, let's do a commercial and then shh, break. We're doing a breaking news and kind of a live insert like that. And that's just, I mean, kids, the creativity, if you give it to them, they're, they pick it up. I mean, just like that. I mean, fast. And they're able to do things that when I was a kid, I never would have dreamed of. And that's just really fun to see that. So. The biggest thing that you have to remember is that it's okay to fail in front of your students and show them that you're vulnerable in front of the kids and letting them know that, hey, you know, everybody makes mistakes. Um, but you also kind of, it, your personality has to be flexible with it. So you have to be able to know that your kids are going to be over, all over the place and you're going to have to be, you know, you know, one technology item might break down a little bit, but you've got to be able to think on your feet a little bit and be flexible and, you know, be okay with sometimes living with a little bit of a mess in your room um, and just you know knowing that not everything is going to go how you planned and um, I was like saying you know it's okay to fail and I tell that, tell that to my kids you know I'm not perfect here and sometimes I even set that up for them you know set up where I'm showing them something and where I know I can do that but I'll set up that mistake and they see that and they'll come up and correct it and, and that's just great to see. So. In my class today, we are actually just starting a project. Um, we're in a poetry unit, and they last week they wrote a poem, um, just as kind of the, a practice and to get the process down. This week, we're now taking that same idea of writing the poem, but now we're bringing in our iPads and having them not only write the poem, but then use their iPad to explain how they did it and to be the teacher themselves. So their goal is to explain to somebody who has no idea about blackout poetry um, the process, any tips, any hints. So they're doing the poem, but then they're using the iPad to really explain the process further. Um, in my classroom, the students were working on um, fixing their assignment that we have been working on for a couple of days. We've been talking about speed um, and using the speed formula. So um, our students were using eBackpack to work on their assignment, and they were working collaboratively with a partner um, to just get their depth of knowledge a little bit more because this topic seems to be a little more difficult for the sixth grade students. The kids are really engaged when they have a choice of what they get to use. Um, I've done several projects where I give them the, the basics, I give them the guidelines of what I want so them to have, and then I let them choose what apps to use, um, how they're going to show me what they know. Um, so my favorite things are really when I let the kids kind of create and let them have some freedom and some options in how they show me. Um, and I would agree with Kelly. Um, I think creating, not consuming, um, making sure that we're using the iPads as a creation device, not just a consumption device because we can use books to consume with. So letting the students create and show their um, creativity. A lot of people, a lot of teachers think that, oh, I might do something wrong, I might break something. Um, but I think really to just jump in and play around and to figure it out and just not to be afraid of it. And I think too, if you get to a point where you're stuck, um, the kids really will help out and the kids really will 
um, you'll be impressed with what they know and what they can figure out. So I think my big message that I would, would want to share with teachers that are maybe hesitant about using technology is to not to be afraid and just to play around and try it out. Um, and going one step further than that, just not being afraid to fail, um, showing your students that it's okay if the lesson flops for the day and we'll find a new way to do it um, the next day, but definitely learning from your students. The students, um, they are experts with the technology and not being afraid to ask them for help and let them lead a lesson if you are not for sure of what to do with it. And they get so excited when they can show you something new that they found on their iPad that you don't know yet. They get so excited that they get to teach you about the iPad, so that's fun too.